Welcome. Hi, this is Carol from SkillCheck. Today we're going to talk about, come on, man, <laughs> think before you act. And that's for customers and employees. So it's going to be all kinds of interesting stuff that we're going to be talking about today on the property. First, I want to start with, you know, just don't start an argument. You know, we try not to argue with our customers. <laughs> And I know that's not always easy at times, but it's funny because I take a lot of questions that people email me and things like that. And managers tell me the things that they get in arguments about with customers. So you really want to think about that and work those problem customers maybe out of the property. But you want to inform also the owner and the supervisor if you're having an issue or there's bad behavior on the customer's part because there could be all kinds of bad things that they're doing that you need to get rid of them because you may lose other good customers because of someone else's bad behavior. One of the other thing is be reasonable about policies. For number one, let them use the restroom. I know this is a gross, <laughs> this is a gross picture. <laughs> I don't know why I was so, I thought this was so appropriate, but it, it just is. But customers should be able to use your restroom at the property. They just should. And if you, and I know managers are like, oh, well, we lock it up. We never let people in there. I'm like, well, why would you not let them in the bathroom? Because if they don't go in your restroom, and even if they made a little mess in there, it's much better than going outside because, in fact, I had an owner one time in Sacramento and she's like, oh, I don't want a restroom on the property. That's no, no, only in the office here. I said, well, there's going to be a problem because when the stores close down and the things open, then you're going to have a problem. So now she has this very beautiful project with a porta potty on the property because she realized that customers decided to go in the hallway and inside the spaces and in, out on the driveway, <laughs> wherever they decided to go. So uh, they will find somewhere to do it and then you have to clean it up. And I don't like to clean that up. That's just, ugh, it's just rotten. <laughs> Drunk customers or employees. Yes, I've had both of those. Uh, the weird thing about this is that you know, I, well, first off, I had a maintenance man that had had a few beers uh, at lunch and then he returned to work and um, he burned a, a hole through his hand because he was working on some light fixtures and he forgot that he had not turned the uh, electricity off to the, to the building. And so it was hot and it went right through him and it bored a hole. <laughs> you could see through his hand. I was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Let's get you to the hospital. <laughs> but think about things like that because you don't want your employees hurt and you don't want customers hurt either. And think about, you know, if you have intoxicated customers on the property or storage employees, that's a problem. And I think you need to call the police. And I've, I've had to call the police over and over at different properties. It's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, there are times when I've just increased a in, uh, customer's rent to get them out of there. I've also restricted their access hours to the space. Um, and I also uh, overlock the space when the store closes. And then that way, you know, they're only allowed there when the, the managers are there. So we just let the customer know, you, you're only allowed access the time the manager's here because they have some kind of weird or bad behavior. <laughs> and uh, if that doesn't, I, I like them to increase their rent because they're causing us more of a hassle. And I, yeah, it's just a, sometimes just easy way to get rid of them. The other thing is inappropriate or sexual comments or, you know, whether that's in phone or on phone in a person, uh, these people were both had problems at storage places. <laughs> One's kind of old and one's, uh, he looks drunk himself or high or something. I don't know what, but again, um, you've got to report these incidents to your supervisor or owner and be very careful about your own personal safety around the property. And if you have, or on the property by yourself, don't let that suspicious person know that you're alone. I, I like, I've had like little, those walkie talkie radios and I've, in fact, I was at a store one evening and it was kind of dark out. It was dark early and was in a Stockton store, Stockton, California. And it wasn't, it wasn't a bad neighborhood, but I just thought, wow, this guy, it's dark and I'm taking him out to look at a space. And so I took the little walkie talkie thing that I had and I said, I'm showing E21. I'll be back in the office in like five minutes and um, thank you. And then I just put it down. 
And, and you could use a cell phone, you could do anything like that and just make sure that you're acting like you're communicating with someone else that's there. So um, report any customers with these bad behaviors to the supervisor, you know, could be the owner or the police and or the police, uh, especially if they're, you know, bad things that they're doing at the property. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, right? This is not your home. The storage space is not your home. And I do believe that that's an Oak Ridge Boys song. <laughs> and it has that those lyrics, so I think it's pretty funny. But you know what? We can't allow people to do things like this. First off, you know, many uh, stores have had fires based on people trying to live in it. In fact, there's a store that we had a, um, a man in that uh, he burned up an entire building and he was inside. So you don't you don't want to risk not only, you know, that person, but anyone else's goods either. So either way, it's not a plus. The other thing is notify supervisor if you have potential hazards or weird things, because you can see the chemicals and all the kind of stuff, weird stuff that's, you know, outside this unit here. Uh, that's not good. And you don't want to smell it. You don't want to get in there. But when you when you have people who are living in spaces or you suspect some kind of drug lab um, or any kind of other bad behavior caused by these tenants, like if someone left all this crap out here like this, I would be, I'm thinking, okay, look at that stuff. That looks like some, the, especially this stuff down up the front, those jugs and things, I'm thinking there must be making meth or doing something in that unit that they shouldn't be doing. So be very, very careful about that. One of the other things <laughs> is uh, dumpster diving. And you know what, I have to say, I probably have been in the dumpster once or twice, <laughs> so, and that's hard to admit. Um, but I will tell you one of them was because um, a, pharma a pharmaceutical rep had taken uh, all of her Kleenex and all of the things that she, brand new, all the stuff is brand new, and put it in a dumpster. Uh, because she had gotten terminated or something. And so she was just getting rid of all this stuff. And so I thought, wow, a school could really use that. So we loaded it up in, in the managers. They had a small S10 truck. And so we loaded all this stuff up in there and then took it to the school. The school took everything. They were so appreciative and it was really nice. But I will tell you, I have had many, uh, not just one or two, many, uh, Injuries that have happened for managers on, in in and around the dumpster, uh, a broken rib. I've had cuts, you know, different things that people have come, managers have come up with, uh, with problems like this. So it should be a no dumpster diving for customers or the managers. Don't leave your meth in the moving truck. Yep, I don't know. I There's been some really weird stuff that I've seen over time, but I did have a manager in uh, Hawaii and we had a U-Haul truck and we'd had a couple of complaints about his driving and stuff like that. And then um, one of my assistant managers went out and was cleaning the truck and she found a meth pipe down below the, the, um, the seat, the front seat, the driver's seat. And so I confronted the maintenance or the, yeah, our maintenance man that was driving it. And he admitted to it. He was pretty cool about it because I'm pretty sure he was high right then. <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, that's mine. Yeah. And he, and I said, well, you can't drive the truck anymore. And I think you can't work here anymore. So I let him go and he was fine. He was hanging tin when he left. So he was, he was okay with it, but it is a really bad thing. You want to make sure that, you know, you don't have employees driving these trucks or, uh, yeah, even clean it out when your customers are done because you don't know what's left in there. Always clean out the vehicles. You know, the other thing is willing managers, managers wanting, customers asking people to move the goods, it's just not a good idea. So don't help customers move their stuff. Yeah, I have, there have been all kinds of back injuries, muscle injuries, hernias, uh, but you want to have like maybe a list of moving professionals at your store, and then that way you won't have those issues. I love, <laughs> I love these two pictures. <laughs> First off, look at the shed on top of the the yes, uh, the Suburban. I love that. <laughs> that took, you know, some guys some effort to get that up on there, but they're cinching it down and they are going to go down the road with that. I can't even imagine what that might, if it fell off, what might happen. I'm pretty sure the police would pull them over if they saw that. So, and the other guy, you know, trying, <laughs> getting that couch up like that, it's just, and it's staying there. It's just not a, not a good scene. 
uh, again, people and moving their stuff and the manager should not be helping. You cannot help them. And I know there are many times that you'll want to, but you shouldn't because there's too much liability and, it, and you don't want to get hurt. And they should, if they're there with their stuff, they should have brought enough people to help them. You know, another kind of dangerous thing that can happen is ladder and probably maybe Maybe the most accidents that I've had have been from ladders. And I do believe that's true with uh, storage in general, that that's a pretty common thing to happen. But you don't wanna let your tenants change their own light bulbs. Um, I know that some owners, uh, managers give out the ladders for the customer to do it, especially if it's a rickety ladder or there's some kind of problem with the ladder. You wanna be very careful about that. You don't want them falling. Uh, and my managers, if they, I, I prefer my maintenance people to do it because they're just more agile <laughs> generally, but ladder falls are one of the most frequent injuries in self-storage properties. So be sure to use the ladder properly and for the right height of what you have. I know we had like this little small step stool and we were trying to get up to a 13 foot ceiling and nobody was tall enough. And then the manager was like, well, you hold me up a little bit and then I'll get to it. I'm like, no, we need a different ladder. We need a we need a larger ladder. Let's just go get it, and then let's. And she goes, "This customer's gonna be mad if we don't change this today, because they want to move in." I said, "Well, we need to go get a new ladder. We need one that's appropriate for the height of the the storage spaces, so and the weight of the individual. That could be a problem too." Have training sessions for proper use of the ladders and for specific tasks that you want people to do. And I, I will, I like these two little things that I'm showing you here because one is for the bottom of the ladder so it doesn't slip. And the top is very often, especially with the metal, with you have an aluminum ladder like this on the metal doors and in self-storage, it just slides right over and it's very, very dangerous. So I like this ladders little helper thing. It is so amazing and it's easy. Uh, I think it's on Amazon, so you can certainly go there and get that. But uh, Ladder's Little Helper or something like that. And the bottom one was on Amazon too. And they were like $39, pretty cheap for the safety of it. The other thing is keep things locked up. You want to lock your office doors when you leave to show spaces. If you're, you know, you're the only one there, you don't have to lock the other person in. <laughs> but use also that out of office sign and it will actually make sure it's on the time that you're going to return back because sometimes the numbers look weird and you can't tell when, you know, you're going to be back. This one's 10, whatever. So you're, you know, I think sometimes they move around by when they get old, they get used so much. It just, if you put it right where it is now, it'll be down the six when you come back, if the, uh, especially if the doors moved at all. Be sure to also make sure your maintenance cart space uh, is, don't leave that open all the time. People get into it. I've had hoses stolen. I've had all kinds of things stolen because the manager left the unit up. It doesn't matter. You know, I mean, some of them, I mean, leave it locked all the time, but if you're in and out, you might just leave it closed if you can see it. But if you can't see it very well, it's better just close it and lock it up. Otherwise, they know where all your stuff is. The other thing is to keep that property in good repair. I mean, this bollard, first off, it's not <laughs> it's not helping at all now. Someone has clearly hit it and it, it obviously did its job, but it's been hit multiple times. I think, you know, getting it fixed and I would put a bollard cover on this so you wouldn't have to paint it or do anything to it. But, you know, this there is a bollard battle out there and I think that we use those for a good reason. But um, keep the properly clean. Look at that dirty mess there too. That's just not good. Beware of dogs on the property. You know, the interesting thing about this is that I, I'm okay. And I've had multiple stores that have had, uh, I've had the canine dogs actually out, come out and train in the evenings at the property. And we've, we've put up signs that, you know, that's a canine training place. Uh, so people, our customers know that. But I will tell you, there are problems with animals on the property and I'm, and people are allowed to bring service dogs on for sure. And again, the police, if they come on with a canine, they're allowed to do that. But most of the people, I would recommend that they always keep their dogs in the car and you want to be careful. I mean, obviously the, why I put poop on here, because you don't want to have to pick up that and, or to have other customers stepping in it. You want to get that, you don't want to get that dog hurt. And I have had dogs run over, 
Um, and it's, it's unfortunate because they let their dog run around and then another car came and hit it. So it's, it's bad for the dog and the, the customer, you know, the customer that hits it doesn't know it's going to be out there. And then the customer that has the dog loose, um, you know, they weren't thinking about the possibility of it getting hurt. Um, but it, but it potentially, you know, it's not going to be good for the customer or the dog. So keep them in the car. And remember, if they're in the car, hopefully in the hot weather, it's going to have some kind of air conditioning going and be very careful about it. And remember also that when you think about this, I mean, that asphalt gets really hot on the dog's paws. And I want to tell you, uh, one of the saddest things that's happened at, ever at a store that I had is we had a kid on a big wheel and he was riding the big wheel while the parents were unloading the truck and a car came around the corner and it hit the kid and it uh, ran over his head or hit his head somehow. And we had to have, um, they, were, they airlifted the child out to the hospital in Sacramento. And it was, it was horrible. It was just horrible. And the customer felt bad that was driving the car and the parents were angry at the person that drove the car, but they didn't, they didn't see it. And they didn't, the whole thing was just bad. And there's just not a positive to any of that, is there? So when you think about all of these things that we're doing and the things that we do in self-storage, you know, I know it's hard, but maybe you're just asking the kids to stay in the car and, and have the air conditioning going if it's during the heat of the summer, but be careful about that because it's really, really hard for to watch the kids and to move at the same time. Thank you so much for listening and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, this is Carol Mixon from Skill Check. And if you have any other ideas or uh, topics, I would absolutely love to tackle them. Uh, so send them, uh, email them to me at carol at skillcheck.com and happy renting. Bye.